Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Current Issues Show on True Chat, broadcasting from Studio 2A in Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm Justin T. Weller. I'm Cam Pierce. I'm the Lance Jackson. As always, thank you very much for tuning in to today's show. And it is Tuesday, November 1st. We're one week away, ladies and gentlemen, from the election. Exciting stuff. You ready, Lance? You excited? Uh, no, not excited, but I'm ready. You're ready? Okay. Yep. Well, I, I just want it to be over. I would like to say that what we're doing today is looking at all of the current electoral maps, as well as looking back at a few of True Chat's projections to see where everything's at um, today, make a few predictions, and then next Tuesday for our election coverage, we will actually all fill out our own map, and we'll see who wins uh, at the end of the night, not only the election, but also out of the three amigos here on the show. So, Is there a prize? Cam's ready. There might be. Oh. The first thing that we're looking at today, uh, I want you guys to take a look here at this current polling map. So as you can see, uh, this is based on a culmination of the most recent and up-to-date polls from 270 to win. And basically what you're seeing here is taking all current polling into account, state polling, you end up with Clinton just barely having it clinched. Uh, now, again, I'll note that the dark blue are states where the polling indicates that, you know, it's, it's, it's almost certain. In other words, you know, there's very little that could change it at this point. Light blue indicating that it's outside the margin of error, meaning that it's likely to go that way. Obviously, the non-shaded slash brownish color uh, indicates that it's within the margin of error or too close to call, and then red meaning the same thing, just the opposite of blue. So uh, what you can see here is that Clinton's got 272 uh, to Trump's 123 as of right now. So even if Trump took 143, he would still not be able to clinch it. So even if he took all the states that are non-shaded right now or that brown color he would still win what do you think about this cam yeah it's kind of what we've uh, what we've been looking at is trump's electoral pathway to the uh, to the presidency is not great not very bright but uh we'll see what this uh what this email catastrophe will uh will do if anything more comes out of it as we continue to next tuesday but doesn't look like it's going to. It looks like it'll probably fade away until after the election. So you're the campaign manager for Trump. What's mm -hmm. your What's your strategy here? Looking at this map, what do you do? You're down 143 points. <laughs> you gotta. I With mean, one week left in the game. You've You've what gotta you You've gotta hit Pennsylvania, Ooh, um, hit Ohio, Florida, Virginia, all those swing states we've been talking about since the very beginning. You gotta hit them hard. You gotta get well, Mike Pence out there. You, well. I mean, it is one of those that's going to be tough, but he's got to, he's got to go to these states, man. I mean, he's got to go to states where he has a shot. And, I mean, according to this, uh, it's, it's not a very great shot because it's already leaning Democrat way, but he's got to go to them because he can't – he has to take one of these that's leaning democratically or he's done. So it's either Pennsylvania or Virginia Take a look much. here. Let's flip over to our um, Trump projection for a winning scenario. And uh, this is one that we projected a, a little while back. You don't have one there, Cam. You're right. This is the one that we're sharing. This is True Chat's Trump projection. And uh, it's showing you here what has to happen, right, in order for him to, in a likely scenario, in order for him to win. And as you can see, when we look at this with current polling, what you find is that he's got to take Pennsylvania, Ohio, North Carolina, and Florida all of which, minus Pennsylvania, are not currently shaded in. So he's got to flip at least the one blue state, Pennsylvania, in order to get it and still lose the places that he's expected to lose, as you can see again in the projection, which line up pretty closely with where everything's at right now. I don't think there's anything actually, right? I'm just taking a quick look here between the our Trump projection for a winning scenario and the current polling that's any different other than Pennsylvania. So. It could be done, uh, but you can see even that, right? Even that only takes him to 273. I mean, it's still mighty close um, in that situation. And so. then in this scenario, if Evan McCollum wins Utah, it's going to the House. So 
the closer Trump gets to a victory, the more likely it is that, you know, if the Bernie Boomer, Bernie Boomer excuse me, movement in uh, Vermont, which is way less likely than the Evan McCollin guy in uh, Utah to happen, or if, you know, he gets Utah to come to his side a little bit when more stuff comes out about both these candidates, this, the Trump win scenario is the most likely scenario to see it go to the House. What are your thoughts here, Lance, looking at the Trump projection compared to current polling? Utah could cause some trouble here. Well, Utah can cause some trouble. Um, but I think um, I what I've heard is uh, Trump doesn't have a, a chance in Virginia um, or North Carolina, um, either one, or Pennsylvania. But he could win. Uh, with some other, but but he has pretty good chances at Ohio and Florida and even um, Nevada right now. So, um, but with this, I you know looking at this, the Trump projection map, I don't I don't like. I don't think he has a chance to win. I think there's a, another scenario that's more likely. Um, so that's my feeling about the Trump projection map is I don't I don't think that's a likely scenario. I don't think he's going to get – I think he's going to get Ohio and he needs to get Florida. I think we're going to be looking at another uh, ballot, late night ballot with Florida uh, holding the election in the balance. Because I don't think he's – I don't think Trump's going to get North Carolina or Pennsylvania. Uh, so um, – but I think if he carries Nevada, then Florida and some of uh, the other – projections I've seen Florida is going to be the key again for both for both candidates take a look here we're throwing up the Clinton projection on screen for you and as you can okay. see this is very close to the current polling projections in fact everything's the same with the exception of shading in a few new states and as we have highlighted here Trump could take Ohio North Carolina Florida and Arizona and still lose and still not take it um, in this Clinton projection scenario. So if she can hold on to, in other words, what she's got to hold on to is she's got to hold on to Pennsylvania and got to hold on to Virginia. And then if she can take Nevada, Colorado, uh, and New Mexico, which, again, should happen based on historical precedent and current polling, right? then she's got it. I mean, it does, it, does not, it does not matter what else he does. He would have to take something like New York or California to upend that, which, you know, we know is not going to happen. So, I mean, that's, I guess that's part of trying to put it in context of you can see how much red there is here on this map, and yet he still can't take it. Clinton still wins in this scenario, even if he takes Ohio, North Carolina, Florida, and Arizona, um, all of which yep. – we still believe are up for grabs, you know, under current polling assumptions. I'm not sure what your uh, 578 guy has to say about that, but um, that's kind of the kind of the situation. Yeah, no, I mean he's everything I everything I see, um, you know, he if, um, he's not going to get North Carolina, but this is yeah, that's the projection. I mean, it's there. He's got to get Virginia or Pennsylvania. That is very true. Well, you said that there was another more likely scenario. Does it have to do with Minnesota or Wisconsin? Or where where else would he be more likely to pick up those electoral college votes? Um, well, where, where the scenario plays out is that um, Trump carries um, – Trump, let's see, Ohio, I'm looking, everything is red. Uh, Ohio's red on the 538. Utah and Arizona are red. And they have their, this is from 15 minutes ago, Hillary at 308, Donald at 228. But if Donald were to take uh, Nevada's six, which is close, puts him to two. 34, Florida, which is close, takes him to 263, that he's got to carry North Carolina or Virginia. And so 
And, and that's just everything I'm reading is that's not possible. So, I mean, he can take Nevada and Florida. Uh, I don't think he's going to, you know, and he, I mean, he's taken, he's taken Ohio. And if he takes Florida, then he still has to get a North Carolina or a Virginia to put him over the top. And the polls, even the ones that came out from the email scandal over the weekend, don't show that as very likely. So, I mean, he could win Ohio and Florida and still not get the nomination. Yeah. Yep, Which would be the first time in history that a Republican true. presidential nominee would win Ohio and uh, not uh, win the presidency. That's true. Or since 1964, I think it is the last time that happened. So, oh, that they won Ohio and didn't win? No, they didn't take Ohio and they lost. Now, the North Car- North Carolina, Florida, and Nevada are all still in play. You know, uh, Trump's Trump's you know at about. Uh, 41% likely in, uh, in Nevada, 47% likely in Florida, and 42% likely in North Carolina with a week to go. But he'd have to have those three and still lose Pennsylvania. Now, obviously, if he gets Pennsylvania, that makes up for Nevada and North Carolina. I mean, if he gets Ohio, Pennsylvania, and uh, Florida – that he's in because of the electoral college numbers. But um, Nate Silver at 538 only gives him a 20% chance in Pennsylvania. But he's got a, but according to 538, Trump has a, a really strong chance in Nevada, North Carolina, and Florida. And that's with giving him Ohio. So uh, he went and he doesn't get Colorado, he gets Utah. Uh, in this in Ohio, and if he carries Nevada, Florida, and North Carolina, or Florida and North Carolina, then he's in. So, so I would, I would think, think that's, that's where you're going to see everybody in this last, last week. week. Push, push, push. I mean, that's that looks like the two battleground areas are Florida and North Carolina, especially for Trump and Hillary. I mean, Hillary, she ought to spend every second she has in North Carolina, and every Democratic operative ought to be there to get as many people out to vote uh, as possible. Because if she holds North Carolina, I don't see where Trump has an electoral college chance. No. Um, well, the only thing, and this is kind of a, almost a closing statement, is you know what's really cool about all this? And that is, for the next seven days, and particularly on the eighth day, we're going to get to sit back and participate in the greatest democratic movement ever, which is called the American electorate. We'll go vote. And then all of this guessing game that we've been doing for the last 18 months will end. We will have an answer. And that's what has got me excited and really cool is that people are going to have to make that decision whether over the next eight days to vote in whatever manner they choose absentee early or standing in line on the 8th with the greatest democratic process ever. And we will then count the votes and see who wins. So um, that's what I can't wait for, is the fact that it's winding down and people will vote. And as always, the people will decide, not the people in the media, not the people in the polls, uh, not the polling organizations, but the American people will get a chance to go and speak their mind and we will end up with a new president. Yep. So basically the message is if you want to whine and complain after election day, you better go vote. There it because is. Because you've got no right to do it if you don't. Mm. So right. either take part in the process and then whine about how it's going or don't take part in the process and keep your mouth shut. Which is why we have yeah, choices for four Maybe years. You've got choices. choices. Yeah. Yeah. Got choices. Yeah. There, there are ready two to be different personalities. You can say whatever you want about all the other stuff, but there are definitely two different directions the country will go in. Uh, so – the American people have a choice. And millions of people around the world outside of the U.S. will watch, envious of our election, uh, wishing that they had the same thing. It's one, so. that, it's one thing you kind of, with this election coverage, just as my closing statement, um, it, it, that kind of gets drowned in all of this, especially with an election yeah. as, you know, mudslinging filled as this one, uh, is that 
we've got something special here, folks, um, with the with the American election and any election that you have. I mean, I know uh, our friends at CED have done a couple of shows on that. If you don't like your presidential candidates and you truly want to, you know, stick up your nose and not vote for anybody, still go vote for your, you know, your local elections. I mean, yeah. in in certain cases, and I would wager to say almost most cases, you're going to get more effect to your local community yep. with those elections than anything especially you know, that we've been effect. talking about immediate effect yeah. uh, with judges and city councilmen and things like that so educate yourself go vote man absolutely it's, it is very important it's what our country was built on and uh, and that's why everyone loves it so much and it's the yeah. front page of every paper for you know months on it have you figured out if you're voting yes for issue 44 you pay taxes for it now I actually, um, I have not done most of my uh, most of my local research yet. Up today. But that is my uh, that's my weekend goal. Yeah. Is on Sunday when I'm not watching football, I'm going to be researching all my uh, all my local issues. Just moved here, so I uh, that's my that's my excuse for now. But I will know before I go to the polls. Now that you're paying local tax, yeah, no more. kidding, man. I gotta <laughs> gotta be able to know what I'm voting for. It's very true. Well, and it all comes down to that. Mm -hmm. It all comes down to that in the presidential election, anyway. When you think about it, it's all about the the specific states that nail down to specific counties, that nail down to specific neighborhoods, that determine how the county votes, which determine how the state votes, which determines how the presidential election turns up. Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it gets pretty pretty narrow because you know the difference between. Uh, whether or not a county goes blue or red, or even a state, a lot of times comes down to you know the thousands of votes, not the not the millions, um, especially the ones that are close, which are also the ones that happen to usually matter the most. Um, so definitely go vote, yeah. vote, vote, vote. And uh, I think you guys are going to get some other uh, current issue show information later this week. But I wanted to take an opportunity to remind you that new episodes are available Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday, so for sure this week you'll find them then by 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And part of what we're striving to do with our election coverage, but always, uh, is working toward our mission for True Chat to be the mortal enemy of speculation, innuendo, and stagnation. We'll champion informed opinions and fresh ideas. True Chat will prove that the media can be trusted, relied on, and responsible. We won't join the media elite because we're saying